Today we're going to talk about classifying and multiplying polynomials. So what is a polynomial? A polynomial is an expression of two or more algebraic terms. So terms are separated by plus or minus signs. So in this example right here, I have each term that's separated by a plus or minus sign. So how many terms are in the following expression? Three. I've got one right here, another right here, and another right here. And I like to say the sign in front goes with the numbers. So the first term is 3x squared, the second is negative 5x, and the third is a positive 2. So your notes might look slightly different than what you're about to see, but all the content remains the same. So just follow along and fill in your notes. And I hope this is helpful. So when we talk about the standard form of a polynomial, so standard form, the standard form of a polynomial that contains one variable is written in alpha order with the terms in order from the greatest exponent to the least exponent. When written in standard form, the coefficient, that's the number in front of a variable, the coefficient of the first term is the leading coefficient. So when I look at this first example right here, it's 4x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus x plus 4. So what do you notice about these exponents right here? And if there's not an exponent there, can I put a 1 there? They're going down. They're written from greatest to least. Greatest to least exponents. Okay, so that's standard form of a polynomial when I write it like that. So if it's not written in that order, I have to rewrite it and make sure it's in standard form. And then that coefficient that's in front of the very, very first term right here, the coefficient of that term is, or of that variable is 4. So we call that the leading coefficient. So the next thing we're going to talk about is classifying. So what do I mean by classifying? What is classifying? It's grouping. We can group these polynomials. When I classify polynomials by number of terms, this is what it looks like. Okay, so the number of terms, if there's one term, we can call it a monomial. Okay, mono meaning one, one term. So if you see this example right here, I've only got one term. What if I have two terms? Look in this example, remember terms are separated by plus or minus signs. So one, two, I have two terms here. We call that a binomial. You can think of a bicycle. How many wheels does a bicycle have? It has two. So a binomial, how many terms does it have? It has two. So what do you think the next one would be? Three terms, one term, two terms, three terms. What do you think that would be called? Well, if two terms is called a binomial, what do you think three terms is called? A trinomial. And then four or more, we just classify as a polynomial, polynomial. Poly meaning many, many terms. So the next way I can classify or group these polynomials is by degree. So the degree of a polynomial, when I think of degree, I want you to think of the exponent, okay? So that's that's a degree or an exponent. The degree of a polynomial is the degree of the term with the highest degree or highest exponent. So when I look at the biggest exponent that's included in my polynomial, I can classify it by degree by that exponent. So in this table, you see if the degree, here's our examples over here. If I just have a number all by itself, that's a constant, okay? It's just, think about if I'm adding four, that's a positive four, right? If I'm adding four every time I'm doing something, it's always four. It's just a constant, it's always four. What if I have an X term on the end that's not raised to any power or it doesn't look like it really, what's the power? If it doesn't have an exponent there, it's a one. So the degree is one, we call that linear. And if you graph that on a line, or if you graph that on a coordinate plane, that's a line, okay? You will get a line, so that's linear. You've probably worked with linear functions already. 
What about if I have an exponent? The greatest exponent is a 2. We call that a quadratic. What if the greatest exponent is a 3? That's cubic. What if the greatest exponent is a 4? Quartic. If the greatest exponent is 5, quintic. Anything beyond that, it's just, you could say fifth degree polynomial, sixth degree polynomial, seventh degree polynomial. So let's get into some examples. Right here, it says to rewrite each polynomial in standard form, then classify by degree and number of terms. So the first thing we have to do is rewrite it in standard form. Okay, highest exponent first. So I'm gonna rewrite it with this term written first. 2x to the power of 5. Then this is the next biggest exponent, so I'm going to write that term after it, minus 4x squared. Then there's that plus 15. If there's no sign in front, it's assumed positive. So I've taken this expression and I've rewritten it in standard form. It's really important that we know this. Now when I classify it by degree, I'm looking at the highest exponent. The highest exponent is 5. So I can classify this, if you look back, refer back to your table, as quintic, which is not on there. You can just call it a fifth degree polynomial, or fifth degree. Okay, so I can further classify it. It is a polynomial. Okay, so it is a polynomial. Kind of like, I like to talk about uh, rectangles, and that... You know, not every rectangle is a square, but sometimes, but every square is also a rectangle. I can just classify it further, a square, to say it is specifically a square. It's also a rectangle, but it is specifically a square. So this is a polynomial on number one, but it is more specifically, when I classify it by the number of terms, I have one, two, three terms. So it's a trinomial. All right, next one. How would I rewrite this in standard form? If you want, you can circle the term. Remember, sign in front goes with the number. So that's my highest exponent. So I'm going to write that first. What would go next? Minus x squared plus 20x, then plus 1. So if I now take this and classify it by degree, well, it's really easy when I've got it in standard form. It's just that first exponent. Okay, if I classify it by degree, what is it? It's cubic. Number of terms, there's four terms, so that makes it a, look at your chart, polynomial. Okay, so standard form for number three. How would I rewrite that? y to the fourth plus y cubed minus 3y. So now I'm going to classify it by degree. I'm going to look at that 4. What does that make it? Quartic. There's three terms, which means it's a what? Trinomial. So degree and number of terms. You've got two tables in your set of notes. That's what you're looking at. So on number 4, what would this be if I rewrite it in standard form? 3x plus 1. Remember, if there's no exponent there, if there's a variable with no exponent, it's assumed 1. So by degree, it has a degree of 1, which we call linear. When I graph it on a coordinate plane, it makes a line. How many terms? Two terms. That's a binomial. Let's look at number 5. Well, I've only got one term there, so I can't exactly rewrite it in standard form. It's just that. But my exponent is a 2, which makes it a what? Quadratic. This is one a lot of students forget, quadratic, but you just need to say it. Quadratic, quadratic, quadratic. Number of terms, one term, makes it a monomial. So that's classifying polynomials. Now let's get into the second section of our notes where we multiply a monomial times a polynomial. So you've seen something like this before, okay? When you have a term right in front of the parentheses, butted up right next to the parentheses, how do you get rid of the parentheses? You distribute into every 
single term, except now we're using our exponent rules. We're going to use our product rule that tells me when I'm multiplying two terms that have the same base, same letter, if you will, I can add the exponents. So let's look at each one, okay? I like to say numbers then variables. So I'm gonna multiply, and I'm gonna do it like this, one at a time. 2x squared times 4x to the fourth. Two times four is eight, and then x squared times x to the fourth is x to the sixth. 2x squared times negative 3x cubed. Remember, sign in front goes with the term. So two times negative three is negative six. X squared times X cubed is X to, X to the fifth. Next one, two X squared times two X. Two times two is four, do that first, then apply your product rule to your variables and their exponents. X squared times X is, and remember if nothing is there, can I put a one there? Sure. Two X squared times negative one is negative two X squared. So one of the things that we need to remember is that if I have one, two, three, four terms inside of my parentheses and I'm distributing something, I'm gonna have one, two, three, four terms in my answer. So you need to make sure you have that. If you distribute and you've, a lot of students wanna forget that minus one, no, you need four terms in your answer. Okay, let's move on and do these examples. On number six, I'm gonna distribute 6x times 5x squared, numbers, then variables. 6 times 5 is 30. x times x squared is x cubed. Next term, 6 times negative 10x. 6 times negative 10 is negative 60. x times x is x squared. One thing at a time. Just go slowly, numbers, then variables. And if I'm going too fast, you can always pause it. Pause the video, rewind it, go back, whatever you need to do. In number seven, let's do, and I have that term, but it up right next to the parentheses. I wanna get rid of the parentheses, let's distribute. Negative three M squared times negative 12 M squared. So negative three times negative 12 is positive 36. Then variables, M squared times M squared is M to the fourth. Next term. Negative 3m squared times negative 8m. Negative 3 times negative 8 is positive 24. m squared times m is m cubed. Last one, right? Three terms inside the parentheses. I'm going to have three terms in my answer. Negative 3m squared times positive 5 is negative 15m squared. Let's move on. We are rocking and rolling, and I'm going to switch colors just because I want to. Number eight, seven x cubed times five x to the fifth. What is that gonna be? 35 x to the eighth. Seven x cubed times nine x squared. What is that gonna be? Positive 63 x to the fifth. Okay, look at number nine. Oh, I've got some multiple, va multiple variables here. Okay, so 2ab squared times 8a. Numbers, then variables, each variable at a time. So 2 times 8 is 16. a times a is a squared, and then the b squared doesn't go away, it stays. Let's look at the next one. 2ab squared times 7b. Okay, numbers, then variables. 2 times 7 is 14. The A doesn't go away, and I'm writing it in alpha order. B squared times B is B cubed. All right, next one, number 10. Ooh, we've got a fraction there. Okay, if I multiply anything times one half, I'm just gonna take half of it. I'm gonna divide it by two. That'll make this really simple because all of these coefficients inside the parentheses are even, so I can easily divide it by two. Okay. Negative x cubed y squared times 10x to the fourth. Okay, negative one half times 10 is negative five. Now let's apply my product rule to these variables one at a time. x cubed times x to the fourth is x to the seventh. Then the y squared doesn't go away. It's a part of that term. Even though I don't have a y squared here or a y, 
That's okay, but it doesn't go away. Now, next term. This time's my second term. Numbers, then variables. Negative 1 half times 6 is negative 3. x cubed times x cubed is x to the 6th. We add them. y squared times y, if it doesn't have an uh, exponent there, can I put a 1? Sure. y squared times y is y cubed. Next term, last term. Negative 1 half times negative 2 is positive 1. Then x cubed times x squared is x to the fifth. y squared times y to the fourth is y to the sixth. Now, do I need this 1 in front of that x to the fifth, y to the sixth? No, you don't need it there. Will your teacher ever count it wrong if you have it there? No. Okay, so you can always have it or not have it. Okay, it's like multiplying something times 1. You don't really need it, but it's okay if you have it there. All right, number 11, this is our last one. How many terms do we have inside our parentheses? Four, so how many terms are we gonna have in our answer? Four, all right, let's do it. 2x to the seventh times y times 6x to the fifth. Okay, two times six is 12. x to the seventh times x to the fifth is x to the 12th, and then the y doesn't go away, it stays. Next term. 2 times 5 is 10. x to the 7th times x cubed is x to the 10th. y times y squared is y cubed. Next term, 2 times negative 3, negative 6. And notice we're going numbers, then each variable at a time, x's then y's. x to the 7th times x is x to the 8th y times y to the fourth is y to the fifth. And last one, since I'm multiplying it by negative one, it's gonna be negative two x to the seventh y. And that concludes your notes over classifying and multiplying polynomials. I hope it was helpful.